As I've mentioned before, the high performance compute systems you'll work on will typically be remote systems. This raises the issue of how to put files on and take files off of those systems. For example, say you've written a script in a text editor on your local computer, but you want to run it on a supercomputer. You'll need to first get it on there, and then after the script runs on the remote computer, you might want to copy the results back to your local computer. Or maybe there's a publicly available data set that you want to download onto the remote computer to work with. In this video and the next, we'll take a look at several approaches for doing these things. We'll start here with a focus on Secure File Transfer Protocol, or SFTP, and then look at the commands curl and wget in the next video. It's important to note that SFTP, like SSH, which we talked about in the video on connecting to remote computers, will probably only be available on Unix-based systems. Accessing SFTP's functionality on a Windows-based system will probably require downloading a client like PuTTY and utilizing its PSFTP option. We previously looked at this depiction of the Owen supercomputer at OSC as an example of a high-performance compute system. The bottom left highlights a connection you make between your local computer and that remote system. In videos to this point, we focused on SSH as a way to connect, in which the environment inside your terminal window becomes that of the remote computer. Think of it as a one-way connection, in which you're working exclusively on that remote computer. SFTP works differently, more as a two-way connection, where you can access both the remote computer and your local computer at the same time. Making connection by SFTP is very similar to SSH. We just replace the SSH with SFTP, and then the username at address part stays the same. After I enter my password for the remote system, I've now made the connection. Since it's a two-way connection, a command like pwd or print working directory may need some extra context, since you can think about having a working directory on your local computer and a separate one on the remote computer. In its standard form, the pwd command returns the directory on the remote computer, and lpwd, which stands for local print working directory, gives your working directory on the local computer. This pattern holds for other commands such as cd, ls, and mkdir. Note, though, that the commands you have access to through an SFTP connection are more limited than an SSH, and are just those related to transferring files. So, I'll list the contents in the remote directory with ls, it's currently empty, and then I'll list the contents in my local working directory with lls. Locally, I have three text files and a directory named example.dir. There are two additional text files inside the example.dir folder. Let's first move file1.txt to the remote computer. SFTP has two special commands that are important and that are specific to SFTP, put and get. Put will copy a file from your local computer onto the remote computer, and get does the opposite, downloads a file from the remote computer to the local computer. So, I run put file1.txt, and then ls again, and we now see that file on the remote computer. Globbing should work, so we can put the three text files onto the remote computer with put filestar.txt, or even in this case, something as simple as put fstar will work. Note that when you're moving multiple files at once, like we just did, some systems might require that you use mput and mget in place of put and get. Think multiple put and multiple get. Now let's try to put the example dir folder onto the remote computer. Put example dir, at least for me, returns a message that example dir is not a regular file. In this case, we can add the dash r, or recursive argument, that tells put to move the folder, along with all of its contents, to the remote computer. The get function does the opposite. It moves files from the remote computer to your local computer, but otherwise works in a very similar way as put. The get and put functions within SFTP are probably the two more common tools you'll end up using for transferring files, but these only work in cases where files are moving between your local computer and the remote computer. In the next video, we'll look at a slightly different scenario in which files can be downloaded directly from the command line.